With a somewhat trimmed beard, I am more than ready to tackle the third summer break episode at Stuttgart. We are commencing our journey to season number four. Can I make this video under 20 minutes? I'm not sure. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Jochen aka Leo Demis here and welcome to part 27 of Stuttgart über alles. In this FM21 series I try and transform Vau of B Stuttgart in Germany from a newly promoted Bundesliga club into a European giant. If you are new to the channel and this is the kind of content you are looking for or if you know the series and you like it, feel free to show me some support by liking the videos and by subscribing to my channel Whack on that good old notification button so you won't have to miss a single thing. Well, here we go, the end of season review of our third season at Stuttgart. The new arrivals, I, I can kind of predict this because Madi Kamara, although I think he came in like in January, but I thought he was really good, man. So he has been chosen uh, as like what best player, I think, best new arrival. The board are delighted with the deal to sign Madi Kamara, as am I. Let's go to the season's results. Of course, the board expectation was to have a top half finish. Well, we finished second. We had an average home attendance of 90%, which is awesome. And also means that there were almost 55,000 people on average at our home attendance, which is insane. Competition top scorer Matthias Arezzo with 14 could be higher if you ask me for an actual German I mean can we say like a top tier club maybe not yet but we are most certainly getting there of course the board confidence is an A plus because we overperformed massively um, so yeah that was to be expected let's go to moments to remember biggest win 5-0 wipe against Freiburg match to remember the DFB Bukal, I don't know. I think this was the quarter or the semi-final, but I'm not sure. We, of course, have beaten Schalke at their place 4-2. Goal of the season, well, here he is, Kamara, with a well-struck effort from 28 yards. Let's have a look. Let's see if I remember this goal. Sosa with the ball on the left-hand side. Oh, there he goes. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. I think this is, um, aesthetically speaking, the most beautiful goal I have seen in the whole series. Feel free to tell me otherwise, but I think that was it. Let's go back. Okay, goal of the season, we had that. The finances, well, the club reputation stayed the same, and I'm not really sure I agree with that, because, I mean, we finished second in the league, we finished second in the cup, and we also finished second to complete that losing treble, if you will, in the freaking Euro Cup. So I would think, although we are already at a four-star reputation, that we would have gone up. But who am I? Merchandise, top shirts, Salamakas Arezzo, Madi Camara, and Tonali and Gonzalez. Which I guess was to be predicted. How we lined up is equally <laughs> as to be predicted as the shirt sales. I mean, do I even have to go over this? You know them. Blanco, Tuanzebe, Amadozic, Pazella, Sosa and Salamakas, Camaro, Tonali and Eglov as our midfield triangle. And of course, striker duo Arezzo and Gonzalez. Let's go to the Accolades. Player Awards, Fans Player of the Season, Borna Sosa. Okay. I guess he has the most assists. Yep, he has eight assists. So that's probably one of the reasons. Young player of the season, Amadozic. Signing of the season, obvious. That's Camara, goal of the season as well. Arezzo scored 22 goals in total, which is pretty neat. So also we covered that with eight assists as our top assist guy. Most match of match, Nicolas Gon man of match even, Nicolas Gonzalez with eight. And Ruben Blanco, he also had a lot of clean sheets. I think 18, but I'm not sure, in the league. Um, he has an average rating of 7.1. Record breakers, there we go. In a, in a full season, so all competitions combined, 
He had 26 clean sheets, man. How awesome is that? Eight player match awards for Gonzalez. Youngest player, Makarov. 17 years and 22 days. Also the youngest goal scorer. New record. 17 years and 46 days. Sweet. So that was it. I'm not really into this kind of stuff like Kovalenko inducted into the overall best 11. Let's skip that for now. Um, season review. We had that. Ooh. Club vision and expectations meeting for the new season. Let's just have a look. I have, I have a tendency to just accept it. But let's just have a closer look, shall we? Play high tempo pressing football. Okay, we had that. Play defensively solid football as well. That's a new one. And I am not sure if these two always go hand in hand that well. Um, but hey, we'll see. It's not a required um, objective. So who really cares if you know what I mean? Let's just leave it at this. A uh, five-year plan, ongoing work within wage budget, of course. And then the expectations as far as the competitions go. Bundesliga. End of next season, qualify for the Euro Cup 2, which is, I mean, okay, to be negotiated later, alrighty. Uh, qualify for the Euro Cup, Champions League, reach group stage, I guess that should be doable. But beyond that, nah, I am not sure. Let's just confirm this for now and go with the next and see what else we have. The dreaded end of season team meeting. Discuss plans for next season. I am curious because this tends to go pretty awful. Um, but let's have a look. The season is finished and now it's time to focus on what we can achieve going forward. Blah, blah, blah. I think we can qualify for the Champions League next year and you need to come back with the same level of ambition. I guarantee you, if I choose that one, nope, they are not going to like it. The same thing, but it says to qualify for the Euro Cup, which is, I think... A much better suggestion already. Uh, it's been a long season. You're going to need to come back fully refreshed because I'm aiming to finish in the top half. Pfft, that's really not ambitious enough in my opinion. So I guess we do have other options though. But I think I am going to go for the Euro Cup. Oh, no red. That's good. Uh, Tonali says, I'm delighted that we share the same level of ambition. We can qualify for the Euro Cup for show. Alrighty, uh, pump fist, I guess. That's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. Although, I mean, some players are just satisfied. But I'll take that, man. Boom. Uh, I'll also be aiming to reach the latter stages of the Champions League. No, sorry, Bob. Let's see. Um, let's, let's be really, really careful here and say... I'll also be expecting us to give a good account of ourselves in the Champions League next season. Whatever that means. Same story. Pleased. Satisfied. Satisfied with a green color. Saying, I think we can do that. Well, thank you, Sandro. Let's pump our fists again, I guess. Or maybe just outstretched arms like, yes. That's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. I would like to discuss some promises I'm willing to make. Okay. What should we do? Well, spoiler, I am going to look for an extra center back and some strikers. And by some strikers, I mean target men, at least one. So let's see, what do we have here? I'll be making improvements in defense. Boom. And um, where's the like the striker thing? Make some cuts. Nope. Trimming the size of the squad. Nope. Oh, here we go. I'm planning to improve the quality of striker we have here through the transfer market. I am not really sure it's going to improve the quality overall because we have Arezzo and even Gonzalez and they are pretty darn good strikers. But I mean, I just want to have a broader... Um, Amount of players, if that's a real sentence. So that's what I want, but I'm going to choose this. Okay, neutral. I can't say I'm too bothered. Well, Sandro, I think that's enough promises for now. That all sounds good to me. I think this is the best meeting we had so far, guys, as far as end of team meeting goes. 
Yes, thanks everyone. I will see you at the start of preseason. Continue. Okay, finance-wise, we had a transfer budget of almost 70 million guacamoles. You might wonder, why is it already at 54? Well, because I already signed a player. More on that in a minute. But now we still have almost 55 million pounds left as a transfer budget. And a wage budget, which I have slided a lot higher than I probably should have. Uh, because it is now at 5 point, almost 4 million per month. We could slide it to, let's say, four and a half, and then we, of course, would have more transfer budget. For now, I am going to leave it at this because I have a feeling that there will be a couple of high-wage players joining us this summer. Now, as far as positions go, I think, as I already mentioned, I am going to look for at least one target man because I really want to start implementing the target man position in my tactics. Um, I'm not sure about the number 10 position because we have Eglov, Renier and Burak Inns who are, I mean, all three of them are awesome young talents. So I really think we don't need an extra player there, although he is only three stars, our best rated one, but I don't really care. So I don't think I'm going to bother too much about that. Same story for the center of midfield and the wingers. My main focal point in the transfer window, apart from the center of defense, no, apart from the striker, is the center of defense, because I really want to have another world-class, or at least very good central defender, to combine with Tuanzebe, Amadouzic, Popov, and Pazella, uh, maybe even move Tuanzebe over to the right wing-back position, or the full-back position, and have Salamakas move up further, up the pitch. I'm not sure, but that is with the striker position. The center of defense is by far my main focus for this transfer window. I could also go for a left wing back because don't get me wrong, I do love Borna Sosa, but he is like still starting to consider whether he should be looking to move to a bigger club. And I get that in a way, but I think this season or the upcoming season will be the season where we establish ourselves as a maybe the, and no, I'm not saying the, but at least one of the top clubs in Germany and hopefully start to move up the European ladder as well. No promises, but I just have a gut feeling, man. It is now July 1st, but before I show you the transfers that I brought in and that went out, Let's have a look at our updated club vision. For the end of current season, they want us to be competitive in the Champions League and that actually means the team is not expected to get beyond the group stage. Which is kind of exactly what I was telling you uh, somewhat earlier in this episode. I don't really expect us to make that, but who am I? But I am just glad that that is in fact the board requirement. So... I think we can manage that. Bundesliga, they have kind of turned that up a notch. Qualify for the Euro Cup 2 turned into qualify for the Euro Cup, which is also, I think, a more than logical decision. Uh, and I'm happy with that. And also for the DFP Bokal for the Cup, they have a preferred objective to reach the semi-final. All good to me, man, because I also managed, by the way, to improve our youth recruitment and... We are in the process of improving our training facilities, which means that at this point, we have, bear with me, top corporate facilities, excellent training facilities, great youth, fac youth facilities, but that is being upgraded, exceptional academy coaching and exception uh, oh, exceptional diam youth recruitment. So I think... We are well on our way, man, to become, to at least have the foundation that is necessary to be an absolute beast of a club within Europe. Yes, we are on the edge of preseason, and this is what has happened. Let's start with the outgoing transfers. Julian Chabot, I mean, he was angry. 
He kind of felt like being pushed out of the club, which wasn't necessarily true, but I kind of get him. So I just had to let him go. We did negotiate for a good sell-on fee, of course. We paid, what, like 10, 12 million for him? 10? And we all, I mean, we only sold him for 1 million. So financially, not the best deal. Waldemar Anton went to PSV in Holland for 2.3 million, which is quite okay, I think. Then one of the guys that I was really not intent on letting go, but I mean, Egloff, uh, I promised him I would give him a new contract, or at least offer him a new contract. I did, but he rejected it, and he wanted to be a star player or an important player with a ridiculously high wage. So I just said, no, man, that's basically what happened. Of course he got mad and the whole like circus started. Eintracht Frankfurt came in with an offer. And two days ago, I have sold him to Frankfurt for 18 million with a 50% sell-on clause on the whole amount. So not even on the profit, but on the whole amount that they get for him when they sell him. I get half. So I think that's not the worst deal in history, is it? Uh, Wangui went on loan. Fatih Kante went on loan. A lot of other players will go out on loan. But that is about it so far for the outgoing transfers. Just know that Mr. Sandro Tonali himself, let's sort by value because he, of course, is the highest valued player. Um, he is wanted at this point by Hertha Berlin. He was wanted by Man City. They did give in, they did bring in an offer for him, but it was not enough to match his uh, minimum fee release clause of 59 million for clubs in the Champions League. Since Man City have won that Champions League, nah. But it was like 50 million, I think. I could still reject it, and I did. He didn't get mad at me, which is awesome. Maybe it is because he holds me in the highest regard as a manager. Why, thank you, Sandro. Um, I don't know, but I think Man City is going to come in with an offer that I literally can't refuse because it will meet his minimum fee release clause. So I can promise you that after this episode, you will see Tonali again in a Stuttgart shirt, but Lord knows, I hope so. Alrighty, the incoming transfers are the following. I'm not going to show them all. Because, of course, there are some young kids who I did sign for the future, like I always do. Um, but I want to show you a couple of these players, man. The first one is one of those youngsters, but you have to see this guy. Comes in for free from Vasquez Cultural. I have no idea where that is. In Spain, okay. Um, Tariq Zair. He is from Morocco. He is capped in the under-20 uh, squad. He's only 16, I know, good start. He is 6 foot 6. Again, he's 16 and he's 6 foot 6. Yes. He shoots with power. He is a rangy striker. He does have an unsporting personality, which I am not really sure what to make of that, but I guess we'll find out. Um the most surprising thing is target man is not his most suited role. Maybe because his strength is not really that high, as is his natural fitness. Even his jumping reach and his heading, which is, I mean, weird. Seems weird to me. But he does have one and a half star current ability, a possible four star potential ability. Some of his cons are his crossing. That's his division level. Unsporting individual. Okay. Lack of strength and fitness. There we go. So... Is he like a man of glass? I'm not sure, but I brought this guy in for free. So sue me for finding out. Then coming in for free from Schalke, Luca Campanile. He is German, 20 years old. He is a two-footed fullback, so he can play on both sides of the pitch. Two and a half star current ability, four star potential ability. Could do with being better in the air, but as a fullback, I kind of get that. He's five foot nine. He's simply not a good header, but I don't know if I really need that from a fullback. So, a backup fullback on each side of the pitch, always handy. 
And then we have arrived at our four big boy signings because the bottom three are like really young guys who are not special at this point, but hopefully will be. So I'm not going to show them to you. You will get to know them when the time is there. First of those four, Felix Yudukai, and I'm going to call him Yudukai from Lord of the Rings, comes in from Augsburg, who were relegated for 14.25 million. And he is a pretty decent central defender, man. A ball-playing defender, even. He's 25 years old, under 21 capped German international. Uh, three and a half star current ability, as is his potential ability. And his only con is that he fits more into a secondary group than he does to a core social group. That's it. Fairly ambitious, jumping reach 17, yes sir, heading 14, marking is good, tackling is good enough, bravery is good, and I mean he's also pretty fast. And he's 6 foot 4, stays back at all times, refrains from taking long shots. I mean, and he's left footed, so I can play him as the left ball playing defender in a certain tactic, but this is a good player man. Second big boy signing and the first of my two target men, Jürgen Strand Larsen. One of the reasons I signed this guy is because Strand means beach in my Dutch language. So, I mean, come on. Let's go to the beach with Jürgen and let's have him score some goals, shall we? Because he is a rangy striker, plays with back to goal, tries first time shots. That screams target man to me. Uh, he's 23 years old, he is a Norwegian international, which I guess is not that easy because you have Holland and some other players uh, in the Norwegian squad, also target men by the way, so I think that's a good sign, right? 2.5 star current ability, 3 star potential ability, and a more than typical target man, I mean strength 18, balance, jumping reach, heading, finishing 14, which is quite good actually. And I did sign him on a squad player contract. He came in from, uh, from who? Genoa in Italy for 10 million, which I guess is okay, right? But he is going to be our second tier target man because the first one came in from Fulham and you all know him for 20 million guacamoles, Alexander Mitrovic himself. 28 years old from Serbia, of course. Uh, I know him personally from his time at Anderlecht in Belgium. But of course, then he went to Newcastle, to Fulham. You know the career of this guy. He is also a target man, can also play as, a, as other positions, other roles, I should say. Six foot two, strength is awesome, balance, jumping reach. Kind of the same story as Strand Larsen, but somewhat better, I guess, because he has a three-star current and potential ability. A balanced personality, his player traits, plays his shots, argues with officials, plays with back to goal, and gets the crowd going. Well, damn. And the last but most expensive big boy signing I did, coming in from Empoli for 25 million pounds, Fabrizio Leda. He is a new gen. Again, link to the new gen face pack is in the description, also to the other face pack and to the TCS skin. If you are interested, check out the description. Thank me later. But yeah, this guy is also a striker slash winger because he can play as an inside forward or an inverted winger on the left side of the pitch because he's right footed. Um, he's 18 years old. He's capped at under 19 level for Italy, valued at 13 million. So I guess I paid like double. But I don't mind, man, because look at this guy. Technique 16, heading 16, he is 6 foot tall. Um, trib dribbling 13, which is also okay, I guess. He's still 18 years old. He has a lot to learn, but his work rate is awesome. Determination could be somewhat higher, but he has a professional personality. And his natural fitness is 16, so I am expecting... A lot of progress because he does have a possible 5 star potential ability and a 3 star current ability. So I am really looking forward to kind of making this guy even better, I guess, through training. So guys, I am going to play the preseason off camera. I still have to arrange some friendlies and whatnot and set up my training and all that shenanigans. 
Uh, but I'm going to do that off camera. I will be back next episode, of course, with the start of Season 4. The only question is, which game do you guys want to see? Normally, I would start with like the first league game against Hamburg. But I guess since Leipzig were crowned champions last season, um, this is one of the hardest games of our new season. So I might as well come back for that game. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think and which game you want to see in the next episode. So guys, that was all for today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about the transfers that I did. And also, I am already going to ask for your help because I am pretty confident that Sandro Tonali will be leaving us. What I want from you is a name. I want to hear a affordable and realistic replacement as a deep-lying playmaker for Sandro Tonali. Don't be shy. Use the comment section. I thank you. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave me a big thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel if this is the kind of content you are looking for in the future. So bang on that notification button and you won't have to miss a single thing. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon.